Hello friends and welcome. Welcome to another episode where I review vintage fountain pens. In this episode I have for you two vintage German fountain pens. But I must tell you that these two vintage fountain pens are quite rare. And I did a research about the producers of those two fountain pens. And the producer is called D-O-M, so Dome. And on the internet, I um, found that this was a small manufacturer from the town of Cologne, Germany. In that part of Germany, more widely known manufacturers were um, producers like Schoneken, which was located in nearby Bonn and uh, which were the main competitors for this small DOM firm. And also on the internet, I found out that DOM was forced to close shop by the end of World War II. So not uh, much information about them. They are rarely sold on eBay or other auction sites. And I'm lucky enough to have both of them. So first of all, I acquired this fountain pen from the 1930s. You can see there is no name, uh, no imprints on the body about the producer of this fountain pen. We have this clip, which has these motifs, as you can see. And the only clue about the producer of this fountain pen stands in the nib. And I will give you a zoom. And on the nib you can see DOM, Iridium Point. As you can see, the top of this nib is affected. You can call it a stub nib, but I don't think so. It's quite affected to the uh, end of this nib. And this particular fountain pen, it is a button filler. So I presume it was from the 1930s. I paid for this 80 lace, which means I paid uh, 16 euros or uh, 20 American dollars. Of course, uh, the system, the um, uh, filling mechanism, the button filling mechanism needs the sack to be replaced. And um, I think I did okay for uh, this uh, obscure brand in uh, Germany. But this one I really love. This is a metallic fountain pen. And I presume it's their um, uh, top of the line product. I'm not so sure because they are um, quite scarce. The information is quite scarce about these producers. But um, if you compare, uh, I believe this is a celluloid or plus uh, celluloid, being from the 30s. And this is a metallic. So this is another class. As you can see, it has um, the clip uh, with the. Uh, other geometric motifs. Once again, no names on it, no imprints on it. The only clue that this is a DOM product stands in its nib. And just look at this nib. I'm not so sure. I think it's not gold plated, but it's a gold nib. And we have uh, DOME, Iridium. Let me see. Iridium first quality, Iridium first quality, and in that uh, box we have 94. I'm not so sure, but um, I think this could be a gold nib. And again, this beautiful, beautiful metallic body, and even this part, the um, fake cap is metallic quite quite uh, nice product again the button um, the inner second needs to be replaced but um, another dome product another uh, quite quite um, durable fountain pen just look at it I uh, like it a lot so uh, if you are wondering what I paid for this metallic model, I paid a little bit more. I paid 250 lays, which means I paid around uh, 50 euros or 60 American dollars. So I don't think I did a bad deal. Those are the fountain pens. And first of all, 
I will leave the dimensions of the first fountain pen, this black fountain pen, and after that, I will leave the dimensions of this silver fountain pen. Of course, for the writing sample, because uh, we don't have um, functional inner sex, I will just dip them in um, an ink bottle and uh, we will see how they perform. Again, I'm uh, quite... Uh, I'm not sure if the first nib will uh, operate, but we will give it a try and uh, I will uh, let you know how they write. So guys, I did this episode because both of them were acquired uh, recently. First of all, I bought this one week ago and after one week, I saw this on uh, the... Um, uh, local market and I said to myself okay it, the nib is not a gold nib because it doesn't have the hallmark of gold but this metallic piece I believe it was an important piece for this small German manufacturer I have here the ink I will use I will use a simple Königsblau or Royal Blue Faber Castell uh, ink and I will use the same ink for both of them because it's much more um, practical this way and you can see how the nibs um, perform. So, first of all, let me use a little tissue. And I have here a clean one. Okay. So, in case you are not familiar with the button filler, the button filler you simply push this button it um, has a lever inside and it puts pressure on a sack and the sack draws the ink in this case if i want to push it you can see it's stuck so um, this is uh, not a good thing it means the sack the inner sack is uh, calcinated by the acidity of the ink and it must be replaced okay i will just dip it Okay, I'm not cleaning it because I want to see how it writes. And I will try to write as... Uh, so this is a dome, look at it. D-O-M. And uh, this particular... Um, this particular nib, it uh, scratches a bit. So I will call it a button filler button filler if you find the right angle it won't scratch let me give you a zoom to appreciate what i'm trying to do here so it's a button filler from the 1930s this is a product made in germany made in germany in the town of Cologne, this particular nib, it is a steel nib, medium juice one. Let me see if we have some line variation. And yes, we have some line variation, as you can see. So, semi flexible, semi flexible. You got to give a praise to the German steel nibs, especially those from the 1930s, that uh, are both resistant and semi-flexible. You won't find uh, this technology in our days. So semi-flexible. Let me do also a pressure test. This is, and this is with pressure. And it's um, quite unusual because you can see how close the feed is to the nib and i'm quite afraid to push it for further let me give it a little bit of ink and i will change the perspective of the camera because i want to write a sentence so the i'm sorry guys it has a spillage the quick 
brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so you can see uh, it uh, writes quite quite uh, <laughs> uh, interesting let me see how it is on um, a signature it performs quite uh, good and um, I'm surprised because you can see the end of the nib it doesn't have that iridium point anymore but it surely writes quite quite good so this was the first fountain pen and let me check out the second fountain pen and again we have unfortunately another unfunctional button filler you can see i want to push it and uh, it uh, gets resistant that means that inner sack needs to be replaced okay guys let me close it for you and i want to show you if we can post this indeed it can be posted it doesn't hold but you could post it um, i don't um, and i really don't recommend posting it because you will get uh, my score scratches on the body let me put here the cap let me give you another perspective might be a better perspective okay this is it so guys i will put this here again i will dip it in the ink bottle so just dip it okay okay now i will put this aside and we have another uh, dome product d o m and this nib it surely and uh, um writes more smoother than the other just look at it it's in perfect condition perfect perfect condition the iridium tipping is uh, quite well preserved as you can see and okay i have a dome this is um, a metallic a metallic fountain pen another button filler button filler and because it's a button filler i think it's from the 1930s yes another german product germany and the town of cologne okay okay guys first of all um, let me see on how it writes it's quite a juicy but uh, you know that i just dip it so i'm not so sure let me test uh, now here if you have some line variation well uh, in comparison with the other nib this has no flex let me do the pressure test so here no pressure and here pressure a little bit of line variation you can see it is okay let me write for you the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog so here we have it guys it writes like this i'm quite pleased with it let me see how um, we can sign with it quite quite nice it's a smooth smooth nib this time we don't have a stub nib or an italic nib like uh, that one and i think um, we have a broad nib or a medium medium or a broad nib but a quite nice nib and i don't know guys if this is a gold nib it has this impress um, dome iridium first quality and 94 it could be gold because you can see all the gold plating is done in such a beautiful way that uh, it came uh, to us in this immaculate immaculate shape this fountain pen has 90 years 
and I'm quite surprised about not only about the body, it's a metallic body which is in perfect shape, but also by the, its nib. So guys, this was a short presentation of a quite, let's call it um, a mysterious producer. Mysterious why? Because I can't find many information on the internet and believe me, I searched even on the Fountain Pen Network, there, uh, there's not much more information about the dome this, Ameri uh, this uh, German producer. And I thought to myself that uh, if I have those two fountain pens in my collection, I can combine them to form a video. Because um, you saw that uh, in a matter of history, I don't know much about uh, them, just uh, that were made in this town and they were active till the ending of the Second World War. So guys, thank you for your time. This was my... Uh, review of this um, obscure German producer. Wherever you are, I wish to you to have a nice day. If uh, you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to my channel to support my activity. I will see you again at the next episode. Till then, bye bye.